So, uh, if we have internet here, I'm going to demonstrate how to cut something real quickly. Um, I'm going to use their web-based software, which is easel.com, uh, to design, create a design. I'm going to show you some of the settings for the machine, and then we're actually going to carve it and do a little sanding work. because. Uh, you know, you do have tear out and other issues you normally have with woodworking stuff. So. All right, this is their website. It's easel.com <coughs> and it's free. Uh, you can go to easel.com and you can create a free account and you can come here and play around with it and design stuff. Um, there's a way that you can whatever you design under the file menu up here there's share and you can share your design with other people so if y'all wanted me to cut something for you you could go to easel.com and create your design click share put in my email or whatever and i would get it and then i could carve it out for you on my machine so if anybody wants to carve something let me know <laughs> uh, <laughs> Everybody send an email this week. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all keep me busy, huh? I do have a full time job, so <laughs> keep that in mind. And a YouTube channel I'm trying so what's to. Your turnaround on I don't know, it depends on what my wife says. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said this machine is not on your wife's side of the garage. That's right, it's on my side of the garage. Yeah. All right, so this is their little software thing. And the way it works is you have your grid over here where you design your thing. And then over on the right side is your board that you're gonna put on the table. So let's start with our board. So I'm just gonna grab this piece, let's see. Six by three and a quarter. So what I do, I use this double-sided tape, it's just carpet tape, and just cut a couple little pieces and stick it on there. Another key to this is making sure you're using a flat piece of wood. Uh, if you put something in there that's cupped, uh, that's not clamped flat, then whenever you try to carve like a, I don't know, quarter inch deep groove in it, it's not going to be a quarter inch deep in some places. If it's so I've got uh, two lines drawn on here. At, and the origin is zero, zero here, and that's as far as the machine will move forward and to the left. So I'm going to stick my board on that. And try to get it straight and square and everything. Alright, so that's pretty good. It's not going to move around. And then... You can move the machine with the computer if you want, but I've had problems doing that. I tell it to, to travel too far and then it crashes into the end. Or uh, I tell it to go too far down and it kind of just sticks the bit into the wood. <laughs> so that's a bad thing. I've also heard if you move them by hand, you need to move them very slowly because they turn into little generators. Yeah, yeah. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but the light's on the little controller back here when I move it. Depending on which way I move it, the uh, motor makes it light up back there. So. so what I'm doing now is just positioning the bit at the lower left corner of the workpiece best I can. 
Then I'm gonna lower it until it just touches the wood. All right, so that's it. XYZ000. So under materials up here, they have a general selection of stuff. They're, I think they're working on adding things in here, but when I'm cutting pine, I choose birch. Uh, and when I do that, it automatically says, okay, the, our default depth per pass that we recommend is 0.028 inches deep uh, for each cut. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. So if I want to cut a quarter inch, which is 0.25, then 0.25 divided by 0.028 will tell me how many passes it's going to make. Yeah. So. I'm only going to make one pass, so since I'm cutting that deep, I'm going to set the, uh, the depth of cut for my image to 0.027, just to make sure it only makes one pass. The feed rate is 30 inches per minute. That's how fast the machine is going to move the cutter around while it's cutting. Uh, I could increase that speed, but if I do too much, it's going to break the bit if it tries to cut too fast. So. I just usually accept the default because I haven't played around with it to, to know the, the max that it could do. So my piece here, it was six inches wide and 3.25 tall. And you can see when I change the dimensions, it changes the little preview over here. And it's 0.75 inches thick. All right, so that's got my board set up over there. And then the machine, the bit I'm using is a 16th of an inch. So 0 0.0625, I'm using my shape of go. And that's the, the cutting area, 11.2 inches. And that's that. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm just going to uh, do simple things like you can draw a square, circle, triangle, star. You can write with pen. Let's do a happy face. The happy face, you can choose from all these different little shapes and they're gonna add more in here. All right, so we wanna cut that. Remember I told it I'm, gonna, I'm cutting with a 16th inch bit over here. So notice it's giving me a preview of what it's gonna look like. Well, if I make this too small, it won't be able to cut it. And notice, see how it turned red here? Cool. It will tell you, you know, that's kind of a warning. It's saying, hey, I can't cut that with the bit that you're using. So what you do is you expand that until the red goes away and then you know it can cut it. So about there looks good. Now, since I've got this object selected, I have some options over here I could cut on the path, which is on the lines, or I could cut outside or inside the lines, uh, or I could cut out the fill of the object if this were a solid square or something, I could cut the whole square out. So I'm just going to cut, we'll just say on the path. Yeah, I can drag that anywhere I want. I could, I could even cut half of it at the top or something. <laughs> so I'll put it in the center there. Degrees. Yeah, this little handle up here allows me to uh, rotate it. Um, and then also, every little object you draw in here, you select it, and over here you tell it you ha how deep you want it to cut that object. So it defaults to cut 0.028 inches deep uh, for this pine. So I'm going to set that 0 0.027 just to make sure that it only does one pass just to save time. And notice it got really light. And over here you can barely see it, if you can see it at all, but it is on there. But the deeper you tell it to cut, like if I told it to cut 0.75 inches, it gets really dark. And it, over here it shows that you're cutting all the way through. But notice there's some red, that's because this uh, little bit I've got 
if I try to cut all the way through, I'm going to have problems because cutting area is not that thick. Or the tip of the bit is not good for cutting through that thick of a piece of wood. So always check my settings to make sure everything's right. So at this point, uh, a while ago I was able to mu move the machine uh, because the motors are not engaged. There's no power going to the motors yet. Uh, but once I plug in this USB cable, that supplies the power to the uh, little Arduino and G-Shield circuit boards here, which engages the motors. And once the motors are engaged, I can't move them. I can't move it around. So, uh, it has an external power supply with it, is that? Yeah, there's a little power pack. Yeah. And that's another thing that in the new version that's improved, they uh, basically combined all that together in one like box unit. And so it's more organized. So when I plug this in, it's going to engage the motors and you'll probably hear a little thump or click. Did you hear that? Yep. And it also lit up back here. So, so as long as I'm at zero, zero. Yep. <clears throat> so notice my carve button up in the right corner is green. So I'm going to click carve. And this is like a little wizard you step through. Um, so it says measure the material. Yes, it's 0.75 inches thick. Yes, I have it clamped down as good as I can with double-sided tape. What bit are you using? It makes you confirm that. And make sure you have it in the home position. And then here I'm going to tell it to raise the bit so you'll see it move up. And then it tells me, confirm that your spindle is on. So since I've got a rotary tool, uh, with the new one, I can control it from the computer. But with this one, I just turn on the switch. So I tell it the spindle is on. And then uh, up here, if I want to move the machine around, I can use those buttons. Um, and there's some other things I could do with it. But. So I'm just going to click start carving and then it's going to start carving that uh, design. I hope. Over here it shows you the tool path that it's taking in the red lines. And that's one thing with this. <laughs> that's one thing with this machine is that sometimes the tool paths are kind of crazy and it, it will do something over here and then it'll go over here and do something and you know you wonder why isn't it cutting in the order and that's something they're working on is making it cut in a more logical tool path but there's software out there where you can control the tool path and tell it what order you want to cut things Is that what? Yeah, uh, since I've been using this, I still just do it manually. I don't trust myself to move the machine around with the controls, but um, yeah, it does. It's got limit switches that you can also use for uh, homing position. Uh, I just haven't set that up yet because I broke my switch with my sleeve. <laughs> so yeah, you can see how it's jumping around and cutting different spots of it. Now if you're cutting something that's really deep, it's generating all the sawdust, so you want to make sure it vacuums the sawdust away because the sawdust can fill up the crevices that it's cutting and that can hamper the bit as it's trying to cut if it's running into all the sawdust that's building up in, in the groove. So. Thanks, Dan. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you could just hire a Dan and then then we get it. I was hoping to have some more different samples of things you can do with it. Like, I saw somebody cut out, um, they made like a wiener dog, uh, a dachshund. And what they did was cut out the leg parts and the body part and the head and the, the ears and all that stuff and uh, took all the parts and put them together into this dog. You can oh, do stuff like that. George, uh, oh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> But, yeah, I was hoping to do a portrait. I was going to try to do a scroll saw portrait, but on here. Uh, so that's one thing I want to try. Uh, what else was I going to do? Uh, like a puzzle. I was going to make a the, por the picture puzzles like we do at the show. I was going to do one. I was going to use the 32nd inch bit to make a picture puzzle. All right, so it's done. It went back to the home position. Uh, so now I can turn this off. And in their software, you know, they say, you know, they ask you how did it turn out. I guess they keep tabs on how many successful projects they got or something. But you can choose, yes, it looks great. Or if you pick no, something went wrong, then you can provide feedback on what went wrong or whatever so that they can fix their software or whatever happened with the machine. But um, we're going to say, yes, it looks great. It takes you back here. They suggest that you share and publish your project. That's one thing on their website. Uh, like you were saying, the, the carve right, there's a lot of people out there that have designs that you can use. Uh, and download and cut yourself. Uh, they also have a good forum where people share their projects. So there's a there's a growing library of projects that you can pick from from their website to do. I've shared I shared that guitar clock in case anybody wanted to do it. I provided a link to buy the little clock insert so they can buy the right size. So let's take a look at this. Obviously, there's going to be tear out now. I need to unplug it in order to move it out of the way. So that'll disengage the motor so now I can move it back. And here's the finished piece and there's dust everywhere and tear out, but I usually use the sanding pad that does a good job cleaning that up. Different directions to get it all. But it really doesn't take that much to clean it up and, uh, yeah, you see that? But it does a pretty good job. I can vacuum some of that stuff out. It's not too bad. Um, some of the different things I've done is this guitar clock. Uh, this is a piece of curly maple. And I cut, I used an eighth inch bit and cut the whole shape out. I think it did uh, eight or nine passes uh, to cut that out. It would go all the way around and then, you know, go down another depth and make another pass. But, and then I had it cut that recess out. And this is the one I really pushed the uh, um, depth per cut. The bit was kind of chattering and struggling. <laughs> but I got to see what it could do. So next time I know, you know, I wrote down the settings I had for this. So next time I know, you know, not to go so deep. Uh, here's another one. There's different things you can do ahead of time. Uh, like this one, I took the board, I spray painted it blue. And let it dry and then put it in the machine and let it cut the letters and that's how I ended up with that. Yeah, I, I sanded it and you know just enough to get the the fuzzies off but not wear through the paint. So. This one I also spray painted. 
But the difference is I cut everything around the text rather than cutting the text out, so the text is raised. Uh, so it's kind of the opposite of cutting that home sweet home there. And it did a pretty good job. I, it probably could have done a second pass to clean that up. And then this one I made for Rob. He gave me this plexiglass stuff. Rob's Woodshot Daycare for Adults. Looks <laughs> good to me. Yeah. So with this one, I reversed the image in that software. You can tell it to flip it. Uh, so it's backwards, and I carved it into the back of the the plexiglass or plastic, so that from the front it's, it has this depth to it. And the next thing I was going to do with this is build a base that's got a, a strip of LEDs in it that will shine up through it, and the LEDs can change colors and stuff. So, yeah. So I still got to work on that, Rob. So you can't have it yet. <laughs> That's all I got. If y'all want to come up and look at the machine and we can carve something else. If you want to.